So last week I made a video looking at the politics of what was going on in Norway during the Viking times around the AC Valhalla time period. And I figured since most of the game actually takes place in England, it might actually make more sense to make a video about the politics of England at this time. So that's what I'm doing today. Minor spoilers ahead for early parts of the story, so nothing too big. This is just more for the part with the Ragnar brothers, so that's the only thing that could get spoiled here. And maybe a little bit at the end, but I haven't played to the end, so I don't know if this is a spoiler or not. So of course most of Valhalla takes place in England in 873 AD, at least that is what a big brunt of the game has been so far. Just a quick geography lesson, just so everyone's on the same page about what I mean when I say these various things. There's a difference between the British Isles, Britannia, and England. So the British Isles are all these islands you see up here. They include the big ones like Britannia, Ireland, and then also some smaller ones like the Isle of Man, the Orkney Islands, and the Shetland Islands. Then there's Britannia, which is this main island right here that we think of when we think of England. And then there's England itself, which is actually a political region that is only part of the Britannia Island. The main reason that England is not all of Britannia is because England, by and large, was just the area of Britannia that was occupied by the Romans. The Roman occupation of Britannia lasted about 493 to 410 AD, at which point it started to leave, and were replaced by what is the main faction you go against in the game, which is the Saxons. The Saxons historically were coastal Germans, the Romans called them barbarians, they lived in northern Germany and southern Denmark. Around the time Rome was leaving in the 400s, the Saxons came to replace them. Uh, the Saxons ended up creating a Germanic-Roman blend in the culture and language of England. And in the late 600s, so about 200 years before the game, the Saxons converted to Christianity. And at the time of this game, 873 AD, England was divided into a bunch of kingdoms. At the time of this game, in 873, there was only four, but historically there had been a bunch of others, including Kent, Essex, and Sussex, which you can actually see in the game map if you zoom in more on the southern regions. So the four main kingdoms, they talk about this a lot in the game. The first one of these is Northumbria. Northumbria, surprisingly, is the northernmost kingdom in England. It kind of covers up through the neck. You can't go into the northern parts of it in the game, but you can go into the southern parts of it. Historically, Northumbria actually fought a lot with Scotland and Mercia during the time. Mercia is the kingdom that Ravensthorpe is actually in. It's the one you spend most of the early game in. It's the middle area of England, and they actually fought with Northumbria, obviously, as well as Wales to the west. Speaking of the west, the next kingdom of those four is Wessex, which is actually in the south, it's not in the west, surprisingly. Wessex actually was pretty good friends with Mercia, they didn't really fight at all, and Wessex eventually would become the most powerful of these kingdoms. This trend started in the 700s, so about 100 years before the game, where Essex, Kent, and Sussex, the ones I mentioned earlier, were actually taken over and became part of Wessex. And then there's the last one, East Anglia. East Anglia was kind of the, the armpit of England. For a long time it had been part of Mercia, and then within the 800s it became independent, but then it lost its independence again when it was controlled by the Danes. If you play on in the game, you'll see that the Danes actually control East Anglia, and it's also the most rundown area of the map by far. In terms of the political structure, they all sort of had the same political structure, they all had a monarchy. There also was a strong church component, and of course, at the time, England was very Catholic. This of course contrasted with the heathen army, i.e. the Vikings, 
who were quite pagan. They believed in the in the Norse pantheon of gods like Odin, Loki, Thor. The heathen army is actually a real thing. The heathen army invaded England in 865. It's unknown how big the force size was. The estimates range from about a thousand to in the low thousands. It was made up mostly of Danes, but also had some Norse and Swedish people as well. And the invasion was led by the uh, Ragnar sons, who were allegedly invading because of the death of Ragnar Lodbrok, who was the father. It was sort of alluded to in the game how he was killed by England, and then his sons came to invade. Allegedly, it was three or four sons that did the raiding. Instead, in the game, it just kind of shows two. So within 865, the army landed in East Anglia, and then by the next year, they took York in Northumbria and effectively controlled most of Northumbria. By 867, they went into Mercia, but then, as alluded to in the game, the King of Mercia actually appeased them, paid the money, and then the Vikings left and went back to York. And then in 869, as again alluded to in the game, the East Anglian King was killed and someone else was installed. In 871, the Vikings went into Wessex for the first time, but once again they were paid money and the Vikings left. And then, when the game takes place 873, and this is when you follow the Ragnar brothers, they go back into Mercia and then get rid of King Burgred and put in Sheowulf. That whole sequence is seen in the game, and that did actually happen in 873. And then after that point, by 874, the group split in half. Part of it stayed up in York, part of it went down to Wessex and try and invade Wessex again. But, as I said, Wessex was the most powerful of these kingdoms, and if you see in the trailer, it talks about Alfred the Great, and he's the one kind of narrating, and he seems to be the main Templar villain in the game, which I have not gotten to yet, so I don't know if I'm spoiling this. In 878, the Vikings were defeated at the Battle of Eddington, and eventually they came up with a treaty where the Vikings were able to keep a lot of Eastern and Northern England, but they were not able to go into Wessex. So that's kind of the context for what's going on in England during this time. There were some other things as well. The kingdoms did try to unite a little bit in the face of the Vikings, namely because they were all Christian and the Vikings were pagans and they didn't really like pagans too much. That being said, since the Vikings kind of went into East Anglia, took out East Anglia, and then everyone else started getting wrecked by the Vikings. No one was really in a good position to help each other. It does kind of allude to that if you go into the Codex. No one was really willing to help Mercia, partly because Northumbria and East Anglia had been pretty much conquered already, and Wessex was pretty much just trying to save its strength for when the Vikings eventually came to them. So Mercia was on its own. No one wanted to help Mercia. But that's it for this video guys, hope you learned something, let me know if you want to see more videos like this, I plan on making more Assassin's Creed Valhalla videos, and I will see you guys later.